Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to ESL One. That's right, live from Cologne in Germany from our Studio One, where we're presenting the spring version of our Battlefield 4 ESL One. Of course, EMS last season, now rebranded under ESL One banner. It's going to be a fantastic weekend of Battlefield 4. Last season, of course, we had shocks, we had surprises, we had just about everything you could imagine, including a little touch of controversy as well. Over the next two days, We'll have more of the same, hopefully, because we've got Battlefield 4 in the house, eight of the very best teams across Europe are in action, and some might say even the world. That's right. Today we're going to concentrate on the group stages. Tomorrow we'll move on to the semi-finals and the grand final to find our champion of spring 2014. Uh, alongside me is Dogbert once again. Great to have you back here in the studio with us. Uh, I know how much you enjoyed last season. I enjoyed it tremendously. I know the guys from DICE enjoyed it. Everyone in the studio enjoyed it. Can we possibly have the same level of excitement again? Is it too much to ask? We had everything. We had the upsets. We had like the dark horses getting through to the final. And then we had possibly the best um, final I've ever seen. Went straight down to the fifth and final map. And we had some nail biters and that was great. And yeah, yeah. we've got the same teams here. We can see the yeah, same routines. Yeah, it's not, not too much to ask for, I don't think. Um, these teams have qualified through the usual fashion of our cups. Let's just show you how that works out. They played in four cups throughout the season. Points were awarded through that season. 100 points for the winners, 75 for second, and so on down to 16th. Those points were all added up and the top 12 teams were invited to the group stage, which you can see on your screen right now. They all played through their matches. And a little bit different from last season the top two from all of the three groups went through just like last season but then we had a decider group which infamous came through a nail-biting group to claim the seventh spot the eighth spot unusually came from the go for cups it was a continuous stream of go for cups all the way through the season and the final was won by ESC who also got a second shot at it effectively because they went out in group C so a long road to these finals, a little bit different. What do you think? Is it nice to be able to give a second chance to a team and maybe, you know, allow the go for cups and some of the amateur teams to come through and, and face some of the big teams? I, I think uh, ESC was one of those teams that was always good yeah. and they could do a bit better and it, it, it would have been really nasty to not give them another chance. And, you know, I, I quite like the go for things. It gives <laughs> a lot of uh, emphasis on the teams that, like you said, aren't some of the maybe top tier, but they're getting there and through that hard work they were given a shot and ESC were the ones that took it. Okay. Uh, the eight teams who have qualified through, let's take a look at them. They are split into two groups as usual, the same as last season, same format, Group A, Group B. And when you look at these eight teams, Dogbert, um, it's pretty sick. I can't even find any other adjective to use. Group A, Fnatic, Epsilon, Planet Key Dynamics, and Infamous. I mean, just horrible group, really. If you're any of those teams, you're going to be looking at it and going, Christ, really? Pyrogen, Dignitas, MYM, and ESC in Group B. I, I don't know how much more stacked you could make this. Yeah, no, not at all. And um, I, Group A is going to be a very interesting one. Infamous starting off against Fnatic. That game will set the tone for this group. But uh, Planet Key and Epson is going to be a very good game as well. Like, there is no... ESC are going to have the hardest game today, yeah. without a shadow of a doubt. But every But there are no bad game, games, really. No, not I mean, at all. We're going to have great point, games all the way through. At this point, yeah. every team has put so much practice in. They've all been hitting the boot camps or just practicing really hard. Yeah. And we we seen last time, you, you, can, you can basically... Take the season previously of everything that came into it, and it all came down to just a land fan. It didn't yep. matter how well they did on that. Before, uh, before we take a look at the bracket and the first group games of the day, let's just talk about the season as a whole, because it's been a very interesting season, but it's been a fairly dominated season by two teams in particular. Fnatic winning the opening cup, and then Epsilon going on an absolute tear, winning three of the next three cups in a row. And Epsilon versus Fnatic becomes like a... A massive rivalry anyway. We knew that from season one. They had some controversial decisions against both of them as well. And they met each other in the finals last time. There was controversy then as well. They, I don't think they particularly like each other either. So that doesn't help when it comes to grudge match. Great for us, but not for them. They were the two teams who dominated the regular season. Three times they met in the final. Fnatic won one, Epsilon won two. MYM, the only other team to have featured in a grand final through the season. But they didn't really get it all their own way in the group stages. And we know what happened last season. And they are both back in the same group again. There's got to be fireworks, isn't there? Yeah, that, as, as soon as if Epsilon and Fnatic end up matching up, it's going to be an impressive game. Uh, maybe not maybe not just in the play, but just for the fact there's so much pressure on both of these teams to beat the other. Uh, Epsilon would love 
to take out Fnatic more than anyone here, I think. Uh, so for them, it will be a big, big thing. Uh, but you've got to be worried about how they are because how they are online and how they are online. Yeah, that was kind of my next question was because we saw what happened last time. We built Fnatic up as the dominant force. They haven't been beaten on land. No one's ever beaten them. It just, it, it's impossible to look past them as any other, other than the champions. Is it quite as clear cut, do you think, now this season with Pyrogen getting better and MYM showing that? I mean, MYM, defending champions, let's not rule them out. Dignitas improving, Dark Horses all over the place that could spring surprises. I mean, is it quite as clear cut, do we think, as last year, as last season? Last season, I was just like, yeah, Fnatic, you yeah. know, these guys, will, they all do it. And um, I, I think what everyone's pretty much worked out is persistence keeping the team spirit going through the games and, and the, the two teams that made it to the last final were the teams with the best team spirit and just kept going no matter what. And I think, um, especially for Fnatic, they have a chip on their shoulder. They have a lot of pressure on them to do well this season. Yeah, this yeah they are wounded animals right now and I, I wouldn't want to face them in anything, uh, let alone a Battlefield 4 game right now because they are very angry for the win. Uh, let's take a look at the bracket now for Group A. This is how the four teams will play out their first matches. It's dual tournament format. If you're familiar with last season, then you'll know exactly what it means. For those of you who aren't, the two winners face off in the upper bracket and the winner of that will automatically qualify for the semi-finals. The other teams that lose will face off through the lower bracket for the final spot in the semis. Fnatic versus Infamous will kick us off. Uh, this first game is going to be terrific. And, and it, in a way, you look at it on paper and I know that people have been voting in their droves online for Fnatic to win this one. Do you think it's as clear cut as that? I, I, I actually heard uh, from the Parisian guys that a lot of French people have come out and support of Infamous for this one, but that's not surprising. They support their own. Yeah. Um, this is going to be a game where one team is very, very, very aggressive. And it's French style generally. And it's one that works very well for Parisian against Fnatic, so there's no reason why it wouldn't work here. But you must feel that Fnatic have been doing their homework and are going to try and keep that distance and control the game from the yeah. start. Let's uh, take a look at the Fnatic lineup now. They uh, feature a man called Drunks in here who wasn't with them last season. Too easy, another big name. But let's not rule out the other three. They all play their part. But Drunk said in an interview recently that these guys have been practicing hard, they've been playing hard, they've been working on specific team tactics against other teams to break them down. How much does that matter in Battlefield 4? It, uh, I think a lot of these teams probably didn't think it mattered that much at first. The longer everything goes in, it's not about your, the amount of practice you have, it's the quality you have. And I think that's what the teams are starting to work out. And I think Fnatic have probably been ahead of the curve on that one. I think they probably sat down and studied a few of these teams a lot. And yeah, I think you're going to see that reflected in some map picks later and, and, and definitely in some of their opening strategies. Okay, uh, our other team in this game are infamous. They had a, a torrid way through, I have to say. They didn't quite make it through the group stage proper, but then they got through the nerve-wracking decider group. Take us through the lineup. <laughs> Uh, the Infamous guys got uh, Tony uh, Grimra. I, I, I'm terrible with their names. I'm never even going to lie. I kind of <laughs> got to butcher them whenever I can. Hysteria, uh, Apricot, and uh, Nora. I, you see, I'm terrible with their names. So I always. Try I'm going to get you to do team intros every oh, time. Don't, Dog, please. It will hurt they're, me. They're always in interesting, and the players are not far from us right now, so they're probably sitting there just like shaking their head. Dog, but really, you talk to us <laughs> online all the time. You can't even get our names right. Uh, aside from that. What chance do you give them against Fnatic? We've we talked about the fact that it's been difficult for them to get through. They came through that deciding, uh, nerve-wracking qualifier in the groups. Does that is that a true reflection of where they are, or are they, as Pansy put it, the dark horse of this tournament? I know you know some Katy Perry references in there for Jason Kaplan, but are they genuinely able to take down Fnatic? They need to make this a scrappy game. They need to make it really messy. They need to really just mix it up as much as possible. They're coming in with uh, two players who were very much... Uh, they had to bring in two extra players, underage, they had to replace them. It means their lineup probably isn't as strong as it could be. And they're going up against the strongest team in this tournament, easily. All right. Thank you very much for now, Dogbert. Uh, we'll hear from Dogbert at the end of the game. Don't forget, all our so usual social media channels are open for your comments, your thoughts, your predictions or just your comments that you want to make about the teams, any support messages and what have you, uh, feel free to send us those on the usual ESL channels at the bottom of your screen uh, momentarily. And uh, also, don't forget as well, we have a voting system uh, on, in play on the website right now, esl-one.com, where you can win some goodies. Now, I've got a couple of goodies behind me uh, right now. We've got the, uh, the Razer mice and we've got the Razer headset as well. Now, you can win those. All you need to do is finish in the top two positions of our voting competition and go there right now. Vote on all of the matches over the weekend. The points will tie up and the top two will win those fabulous prizes. But if voting is not your game, don't worry. We've also got your back as well. If for those of you that are a 
bit more creative, send us your support messages for all of your different teams or players. Pick out whoever you want. You might want to support Dogbert, for instance. Send him a meme or a picture, and you can do that via Twitter using the hashtag hash ESL1. And goodies that we've got on the desk could be yours as well. We've got five... Battlefield 4 Collector's Editions. Fantastic. I'm not going to drop that one. I know that's an infamous meme. Uh, we've also got the Battlefield Blackadder keyboard. We've also got the Astro headset as well and the Battlefield 4 novel. All of those could be yours if you send in our favourite creative meme or picture supporting one of the players or the teams. Almost time now for our first match of the day. It's going to be a big one for Fnatic. They want to scrub out history from Season 1 and start like they mean to go on for a championship challenge. Let's find out whether they can do it. The map vetoes are incoming with your commentary team, Lauren and Jason. Thank you for that, Red Eye. And scrubbing out history, that's kind of been the story for Fnatic this entire season. Oh, I mean, yeah. third or fourth place is kind of what they got in the last one, and that was something they were not mm. proud of. For a team of that caliber, you can kind of see exactly. why. You know, a lot of reputation was behind them. Yeah. Didn't meet it. Yeah, and well, right now they did replace, obviously, Winghaven with Drunks in that one. And we're going to see how he's been really melding into the team. But I believe we have the map veto coming up here. And, you know, there's something that you actually wrote up on the article at ESL Gaming yeah. website about Infamous. They're really dependent on their maps. And why don't you explain to us why? It's all down to that Infamous play style. It's a great <laughs> name to have for this. Really aggressive, using those Famuses. And I was speaking to Valu earlier from Fnatic. He was like, OK, we want to get rid of, you know, these very specific close range map. Locker was one of them. That has been taken out. Shanghai, also within those builds things you can really kind of put some pressure on storm another good map to take away from them railway another close range map this has gone fanatics way there's a couple of close range you know ones in there that infamous can do work on but that is a good choice so dawn being first there that can work in their favor fanatic need to stay on point here to really focus up so dawn lankang dam and zavod will hmm. be the three maps and I think they've come away with, you know, the map choices that they wanted. It's kind of interesting because I, I didn't, I think Valu mentioned earlier that they didn't want Zavod either in the map. You can only get so many yeah, oh out, yeah, exactly. you know what I mean? Like, you, you've got to kind of pick your battles. And I, I think the ones they got rid of are some of Infamous's very strong points. As we said, yeah. the famous, you know, strategies they run. You know, sometimes, you know, on Locker even, they, they utilize the Famous in such a way they can still make it slightly viable at range with the attachments that mm -hmm. they work with, you know, the angle grip on there. And then they have two with the muzzle break and the stubby grip for the inside combat. So, you know, the, the bullet spread is near on like a, you know, a rail gun by the end of it. It's <laughs> pretty unbelievable what they can do. So, Fnatic, as we know, putting in the work and they'll be prepared for this. They will be really damn ready. If, if not, then it's their own fault. They put in you know, the, the hard time, they put in the work that they needed to, to be ready for Infamous. And that's exactly what we're gonna find out here. Very hard game to start with. But it, it's down to who turns up on the day. Yeah, it's very true. And, you know, Dawnbreaker is going to be an interesting map for me, which, you know, we saw Infamous play against Planet Key Dynamics in the uh, groups when they're coming yes. through, through Group A. And they were, like, hot and cold. They were night and day on that map uh, between the <laughs> two times they played against it. But the practice that, you know, obviously, uh, uh, Drunks, you know, mentioned, um, obviously, about the them preparing for this is something yeah. I'm really looking forward to. But Fnatic, I mean, we should talk about them, I guess, for a little bit here just to kind of, you know, give their side of the story. Obviously, you know, coming in with the new player, Drunks coming in from Against All Authority from the last season. Yep. He's been melding pretty well. Oh, yeah. He's, he's fit in. To me, which is kind of really weird considering, you know, their history within, you know, the seasons. First place in Cutmer 1, second and 2, third and fourth and third, and second and fourth. They still have it look like the dominating team we saw them to be in the beginning of last season. Yet they picked up the exact same points through the cup. It was just Epsilon picked up more. Yeah. So it's it's, it's a weird thing, and, and it's it's a strange pickup. You know, I was talking to the Dignitas guys last night. We were, you know, kind of mulling over all the different ways teams mm -hmm. play, and, you know, Winghaven was a very different player to Drunks, almost completely contrasting styles. So Drunks, for example, is almost like a too easy. Mm -hmm. They'll kind of leave him to his own devices, kind of, okay, he'll pick up the AEK occasionally, and they're a team known for their ace play. So he'll pick that one up and do his own thing. Now, it's, it's going to switch up the dynamics within that lineup, and it's going to mean that some of these players are going to have to really focus in on the core jobs, and they're going to have to play a little smarter. They can't just depend on Drunks picking up five. You know, yeah. it doesn't quite work like that. Exactly. They need to have unfixed on point value on on point Mort. All these guys need to be locked in with the tactics, which is exactly what they put their practice towards. Yeah, well, we're going to see if they're going to do it uh, this time. And obviously, we'd like to hear what you guys have to say at home. You can always head over to battlefield.esl-1 and make sure to vote over there. And I'm actually looking at the you know vote percentages here. And right now, Fnatic, 61% of you think they're going to take this game against Infamous. And you know, I can kind of see that just from the names alone, but from past results that we've seen and from obviously both teams really playing and practicing getting to this point, I would say mm. it should be a little bit closer. <sighs> It's it's hard to say. Infamous, you know, they had to pick up those two new exactly, players. Exactly. There's a, there's a there's a 
danger when you play with someone who's you know maybe not of the age that they can come to these events you know through the online qualifiers that mm -hmm. we've seen for a previous team no mentioning names and they're not performing so they've had to pick up two new players and with such a defining style to them they have to adapt to their way they can't be the other way around so Fnatic for example adapted a little bit to drunks and drunks to them it was a little right. bit of back yeah, and yeah. forth whereas infamous this is our play style you've got to learn it or we learn you know we lose that selling point we mm -hmm. had so it's really down to those two new players to fit in. And it's not easy when you're literally coming into a lineup just before they go to the offline finals. Yeah, and I want to read into that. The fact that mm. Junks mentioned, you know, they've been practicing very hard these past two weeks. But I wonder, is that because maybe the, the new two guys weren't really melding well with the team and they're trying to work on that synergy? Or they're just playing so well and they're so hyped up from having this new blood in the team and they're, you know, performing obviously exceptionally well. And honestly, we're going to find out very soon here on Dawnbreaker. You're going to be the first map. And what's your thoughts? Who's, who's going to take this one in your head? Because <sighs> this can go either way very easily. Very true. Now, to me, it's a question of can Fnatic keep Infamous back? Can they keep them away? If Infamous get in their faces, that's when there is trouble. And that's what Infamous want to do here. We're almost live and ready to get underway in the game here. The teams are pretty much ready in this one. <clears throat> I believe the Chinese side will be Infamous. So they'll be in the red team and the blue side will be the US. We are live into the game here. So Jason, why don't you take us away? All right, now we're seeing Infamous do something a little bit different here. They're sending three men over towards this B flag. And typically we've seen them play a little bit of a crazy stop, rushing towards C potentially to go for that early fight here. But as you can see, they're already breaking out Fnatic, challenging them out right at the bat here, sending drunks up to the forefront like you mentioned before. Being that player that can play by himself and kind of rotate around and oh well, he does get taken down here but either way Fnatic getting that early 2-1 start and now the real question is how long can they hold this how well can they deal with Infamous in this close range combat because this is their map keep that in mind yeah and this is interesting too Easy actually running with the Famous really unique choice he's gone for there and he's the one trying to get A they could get a trip cap off of this and he looks like he's finally in trouble he's been shut down but already more the smart man the man who plays from the back the clever one in this lineup Gets the nade coming in, keeps them at arm's, arm's length, and they've got the ideal setup, A and B. That's what they wanted, and now they need to keep control of it. And you can see Infamous, they're sending about two or three men over towards the back side of A. They want to continue to harass down and fight for this one, but at the, at the meantime, they have one guy at C, they need to make sure to cap this over here, where they will be hurting quite a bit. But they're going to actually rotate over, I guess, at least send Tony over towards that B fight, but too easy. Well, he doesn't need the Famous, he only needs a pistol right there, picking up one, he won't hold on to it. Either way, he does get the information, and Fnatic almost getting wiped out here, only having unfixed and Valor alive. And you look at a couple of respawns, Valor picks up one, looking for that second man, and actually oh, will take him oh, down oh, as well. Wow. And that's that's typical Valor. Huge. That's what we see out of him every time. This is what I wanted to see. Valor last time, I'd say he underperformed to his he standard. Was quiet. He was quiet. Every other player would be like, okay, that's not bad. But he just got them A. He got them back in the game here. And look how far back Infamous now are. They're going to have to regroup and focus on the site they want to be hitting here. They're, they're using the inside buildings and actually... They're not all running with the Famous. They've switched up their tactics. These guys, you know, they're coming in with something unpredictable and a little bit different. Yeah, they're trying to challenge on Dogwalk here as you uh, obviously coined back in the uh, in the groups. And well, right now, it's not working out too well for them. They haven't really been able to pick up that many kills. It's 14 to 9 right now. And that is obviously a sign mm. of how this game's really been going. But now the real question comes in. They adapted. They're not using the FAMAS anymore. But will they be able to adapt in the heat of the moment? And teams that can do that have been able to perform <laughs> so damn well. And all right now, Fnatic, they're the team to really do it. And you can see too easy. Currently at four and two. Gonna spot out another man, get an easy kill here. And they are just picking these up left and right. And right now, it's not really a close game so far. See, in my eyes, Infamous have the execution strategies. So they're coming in with a plan. We saw the bait out in the middle of this inside, and they sent three men up the highway side. That was a nice play. But right now, we are going to see it's Mort who's going to be in trouble here. He's pretty much on his own, down by this bomb side, unless he gets some backup. And we are going to see the fight really coming down. Fnatic will lock down the C point, and they could get a triple cap off the back of this. They have one man ready to challenge. It's drunks of all people. Can he get the trip cap for the side? He's got the tag, not the frag, sadly. And at least one will remain with Infamous, but this is the perfect start for Fnatic. They haven't been too rustled by Infamous yet, but it's still fairly early in the game. Yeah, I mean, we've seen Dawnbreaker, we've seen massive point swings. I, th I think, you know, around 80 points we've seen, you know, kind of go into their team's favor all of a sudden when they were in the lead. And well, right now, Fnatic, we're going to go for a hit on to see here. A lot of set nades coming in as well, trying to get them from the back of the statue. They will pick up one, but you can see that one man in the outlook right now. We're actually looking for a couple in sight here, but he's 1v3. He's going to get taken down. And in terms of execution, all right, now Fnatic pulled it off well, but the reaction of Infamous was so spot on. They went from A to B as quick as they could. Now they're setting up in positions. They don't have control of Catwalk, but still, they're, they're not being in vision of that. They're not being in the range of it, and they're starting to pick up some kills here. Yeah, really nice play from them there. They they used the bait and switch almost. All right, get them down by C. That's where they think the mm -hmm. you know, action's going to come down. But really, 
we want this B-Flag. And that's what they look like they're going to be trying to get on. But actually, Fnatic have held them off. Look how many members they've got just swarming onto this. C is in trouble. A is still infamouses. So this is a very close game. It's coming down to these very small moments. But too easy coming in with a double kill there. Really locking this down. But look at that. Fnatic so focused on B. Almost got locked out of A and C. So there's there's action coming in for infamous. But they're not quite getting the, the style they want. Fnatic are pulling off the plan. But let's see if they can hold on towards this uh, A point here. Because we do see a good couple of players working up the highway side. Unfix goes down. And that's A ready for the taking. And right now, I was actually really starting to worry about Infamous because I was looking at kills 29 to 16. It was 13 at the time, or actually, uh, obviously doubling them. But they're not picking up the kills 1v1 or even 2v1 at this point. But like, I, know, I think they got a little bit warmed up, a little bit in style. They're taking control of Catwalk, which we want to see out of Hist and their team. And they're maintaining control of A, so they're starting to really get back in this game here. And they've been able to pick up three kills, but they need to transition this into some flag caps. They need to transition this into some points because they're down about 40 tickets. And you're, they're doing exactly what you said. Turn that into flag caps. They still have A fairly locked down. They're going to pick up B here, I'm pretty sure of it. They can reinforce Tony as much as they need. They've got B, they've got A, and they've even pushed down to C. Now, that may give the back spawn, the random spawn, over towards Fnatic up on this side and back down here. So A will be vulnerable, but Fnatic need to make this one count because they near on got squad wiped earlier on. And you can see those tickets are getting close. So 104 to 74, Fnatic still in the lead, but not by a great deal here. Value trying to hold on as best he can. Running with the famous big switch up for these guys, locking down Relic, but he's got an immediate challenge. He needs some help here, and Mort's going to do just that. Takes down two, and it's time to get back towards this B site. It seems like Infamous seem to be, uh, seem to be lacking a little bit of, of teamwork, at least in the, in the fights that we saw break out right there, because they almost got completely wiped yet again. But Fnatic were able to focus them down one by one, and it felt like Infamous Ken sending people in at one at a time just to die right there. But on either way, obviously, you're going to see things change up just a bit too easy. Having a pretty good game, 10 and 5 so far in this one. And you look on the side of Infamous, and well, 2 and 9 for Hist, and no one really having that positive KDA that we need to see out of them. But either way, they're down about 38 tickets. Not too bad, considering we're on Dawnbreaker. But remember, this is their map, and I would expect a team that chooses a map for themselves as the first one to be a win in their favor. But either way, more, we'll get taken down. Infamous not pushing towards A5, but a nice day comes up from Valu, picks up one, might be able to pick up the second one as well. You won't get the tag, but unfortunately not the frag right there, but we'll get in the second one. There's the uh, impact grenade, but he will be taken out from the backside, but it doesn't matter. He took down two with them. He pulled five men, basically, towards that flag, and that allowed the two cap in the backside for Fnatic, and now them to get set up in position for this push. Very well played. He bought the time they needed. Now Infamous are going to try and push down from A towards B. Rella is in a good spot to actually make this one count. He's got Heist in a good position as well to support, but... They're in dribs and drabs. They're really not getting towards the sites as a collective unit. One man cannot make all the difference in a game like Battlefield. We know that. And Fnatic are roaming as a pack here. Three, two players always moving in. It's a 2v2 down on A, currently in the hands of Infamous, but it looks like it might change here. Drunks is going around the side. He does get the tag, but doesn't get any more than that. And now it's just down to Mort. And I don't think he's going to be able to do much here because Valu is becoming an absolute beast. He does pick up one, so he's buying time. And look, the two flags have been defended. He does go down in the end, but he's done the job they need. He's allowed too easy to set up. He's allowed a respawn to come in. Fnatic are playing smart and infamous with only 31 tickets. They're in trouble here. And the thing is, they lost two people there. Yeah. But if you think about it in the long run, they lost two tickets compared to picking up another 10 or another 15 because they held them back. They held the push and they're able to get the respawns in. And right now, with all these nades being thrown in, they're going to maintain control of B here. And, right, and Fnatic, they're looking to you know, come out of this first time with an, about a 90 ticket lead here. But Infamous, they need to get something going. They can chip away this lead so quickly. We've seen it happen so many different times. And we have to see him step up right now. Yeah, it was an interesting choice from Heist and Grim then to come back and try and revive on A. They're trying to keep every single ticket they can. And right now, Tony is pretty much the man on a mission. He must get this C site here. If they don't, they're going to be in such a dire state. So hopefully he can do that. Meanwhile, at B, it's still in the hands of Fnatic. But you can see Fnatic quickly moving down towards the C flag. Pressure comes in. Nades are landing. Rell is picking up the kills. But can anyone else step up here? Oh, the respawns are looking dire. They're being mowed down one by one. And those 13 tickets are going to be ripped away with a Neuron squad wipe in Fnatic's favor, and this could be a triple cap, really, to add insult to injury. And what a phenomenal first half from Fnatic here. Yeah, they're coming out of the gate strong, and I mean, obviously, they're fighting for some redemption here because of the underperformance that happened last time, and, you know, we've seen them really, you know, come into through these cups, and, and the group stages adapt their strategy and how they play, and that's one thing we need to see, you know, a new kind of team out of them. And, yes. And, and you can see the different play style right there because the fact that Drunks replaced Winghaven, Yep. And Winghaven was, as you like to call it, the anchor role. Yep. He was the guy to sit back at a flag, hold on to it, and use him as a respawn. 
And I want to point out the score right here. The two kind of players that I always look to for the big kills. Normally I'd put Drunks in there, but he didn't quite have the comfort game. Valu, 13 to 7. Too easy, 16 to 7. We've questioned their performance before. I don't think they played very well as individuals previously. <laughs> this time, certainly a good start, but Infamous never got you know, that comfort zone there. They were never comfortable, you know what I mean? Every time they got one, the immediate backup plan springs into effect. You yeah. saw a really smart play from Fnatic, but this is only the first half. 86 tickets, I've seen bigger things being turned around and played out differently. So I don't want to read too much into it yet. You know, Fnatic, we've said that they're looking for a redemption, but that also puts a lot of pressure on their shoulders to really make it count. Because let's say they lose twice here. Let's say, you know, it wasn't a fluke the first time. Let's say it's a genuine problem. How much pressure if there's one mistake, if they lose a half, Suddenly, everyone's blaming each other. You can see too easy there, just talking things through, making sure he's focused. He looks very serious. A man who's got a lot of words to say about this, clearly not taking it lightly. <laughs> uh, so very much ready for the game, and we'll be going back in in just a second. But these guys, they need to stay focused. They need to stay ready. And just keep in mind what worked on that first half. You know what's really interesting, too, is that we always talk about the meta. You know, it's, it's still adapting it over time, obviously. And one thing we've seen on... I want to say 90% of the Dawnbreaker games is that Catwalk is always a crucial part in the game. But this time, it felt like it didn't do anything. Because I feel that you know, normally it's Infamous who would be the you know the team to play with the close-range weapons. So they'll use the inner building. So mm -hmm. they want to keep it as you know nice in the corridors, You know, keep that bullet spread to a minimum. You know, Countdown has begun, so we can get into game nice and quick here. But you know the, the thing that Fnatic did, they replicated it. They're like, okay, well, we're confident. We'll challenge you one-on-one. -on -one. And here we go. We're going to be live into the game. Let's see if this actually pays off the second time. This time around, it'll be Fnatic on the Chinese side. And the US side is going to be Infamous. So Infamous now have a deficit, let's say, of 86 tickets. So, if they drop below that, first map, Fnatic. Hmm. Let's find out what we've got going on. Look at the overview map. Wow. See those three men? They did not even go into that B flag. This is something I've actually never really seen before. They're waiting for Infamous to get control of the B flag, and then they're going to push in after that. And they're playing cautious because they realize we have a huge ticket lead. There's no reason to play something crazy, give them an early start, and let them build up some momentum here. But either way, the two, three men have gotten taken down here. And Infamous, they still maintain that two cap, and maybe even a tri cap if they want to push towards the A flag. I don't think they want to. They want to keep those spawns round the back for Fnatic here. They want to try and maintain this 2 to 1, or even maybe go for a neutralize onto A if they have to. Smart play from Infamous. Uh, Fnatic, as you said, playing for the uh, later game. They've still got those tickets to work with. I understand why they did it, but you're also depending on winning these 1v1s. And got to say, Infamous, very smart team. They're playing the inside building game. Fnatic, know it. You can see those nades coming in, but Rella, he's going to love this. It's just like, okay, you come through that nice little bottleneck, and I'll punish all of you. Finally, the nades are landing. Grim's now in trouble. He goes down. And now the inner buildings are being won over by Fnatic. No cover will be able to take down Drunks here. He's got complete free reign on this B-bomb site. This should be a 2-1 to -one to Fnatic. It's so weird to see this too because, you know, they're not they're not trying to counter Infamous' style. Well, they, they are in the end, but they're not trying to counter playing, you know, back, playing long range. They're just straight up, we're going to challenge you face to face. And we're winning these fights easily, as you can see. I mean, yeah, they're not up in kills right now, but considering the first half they were able to, you know, build up. It's really shown how this game's going here. And Right now, Infamous, they need something. They don't have control of C or A. They're sitting in the middle of the map here, you know, I guess struggling to decide, you know, do we want to hit A or B here? Maybe just pick up a kill and really work off of that. But we're seeing some trades, you know, one for one. And Drunks can be pushing in. We'll pick up a second one as well. We'll go to push into that B flag. But this is what Drunks does best, and you pointed this out perfectly. He's the guy to run off by himself and open up sites. He did it at A in the last half, and he's doing it at B now. Yeah, he certainly is. And, but I've got to say, the 1v1 that went down on A was very important. Abrico won that, therefore picked up A. So there's a little bit of silver lining. And actually, Infamous are breaking through in very small, uh, small amounts. So Heist here is completely behind Fnatic. If he waits for a respawn to so the other side of the team, go for a big push onto B, let's say, to almost throw away a couple of tickets. But if he played smart then and kind of played a little slower, he could add reinforcements. He's out of ammo. He's going to go for the challenge with a pistol. He picks it up. Valu goes down and C is open. Heist went for the braver option there and it's paid off. Yeah, it worked out very well for them. As you see, they're right now Fnatic getting some respawns over towards the A flag. They actually don't have a flag in their hands just yet as they finally do lock that down. But either way, remember Infamous, if they drop below 86 tickets in this half, then they have dropped map number one and we'll be going on to the next one on uh, Land King Dan, which is Fnatic's choice. And obviously they have to give it all, their all right now because they have about 40 tickets to work with here. And well, what are they going to do? They still have B and C. We're back to the you know start of the game kind of hold, but can they maintain it this time? BNC doesn't favor their inside gameplay. They're having to put Abacor out here. He's running with a better weapon, 
But look at those nades from Fnatic. They're using these nades as like a linchpin way to get back into this game, just to flush them out of those tucked in corners to just mow them down. And it's a slower kind of play coming out from Fnatic, but it's not working. Rela held on so long at B that it's getting a good chunk of tickets, but now open for the taking. But Fnatic, no, they're still down by C and they've actually gone for a split on towards C as well. Smart play from Fnatic there. Splitting Valu once again off by himself. He'll get taken down, but he's drawn these guys away, bottlenecked them in for the rest of the guys to get more advanced towards B and get a two a nif near on the triple cap for a second. Yeah, it seems like uh, the way Fnatic's playing this is that they are making Infamous overcommit. Like you had Valo go around the back by himself, he kept the flag, but he pulled three, four people back there. And that allowed the rest of Fnatic to push up to B, grab the flag, and now set up in position. They realize, you know, we don't really need to kill Hunt right now, and we can. But they have about 20, 30 tickets to work with. As long as we sit here, defend these flags, there's no way they're going to get back into this in Infamous. They have to do something right now. They they can't die one by one anymore. They need everyone alive. And it looks like Heist is going to be the man to do that. Going through Dogwalk here, picking up two kills, and swinging around oh, towards the A flag. Here's Spotter, actually a couple more, but we'll be dying in the end. But then again, Fnatic, Valu, reading this position perfectly, reading the situation, and is already back at sea. And they will pop the tri-cap. And I want to say there's one good push left in Infamous. Yeah, tickets. Big thing. 95 to 93. Taking the deficit. If they drop below 86, they are out of this one big push. They've kind of mustered themselves together towards this A flag. They're going to go for that. They've got a little cheeky split towards B, but Fnatic are putting their players towards this A side. They're going to go for it. There's hardly any tickets left. They cannot die. They can't respawn. It's almost too little too late. Literally two tickets. Stacks way of picking up the first map. They've reclaimed A, B for now. Is theirs, but I think this is almost it's too a, little, yeah. too late. It's, it, it is, because they still have that 2-1 to one count. There's the 86 ticket point. One more ticket will get, and there it is. So that will be Fnatic picking up mat number one here on Infamous's choice on Dawnbreaker. That means Land King Dam now. That map, I've only seen Fnatic ever stomp on. Fnatic are very, very strong on that map. It's unbelievable to watch them play, and that's a relieved face, to say the very least. There's not much expression from Estonians, I'm going to say it now, but that man <laughs> literally had a bit of a sign uh -oh. like, we've done it on a map that has both close and long range elements and they played them at their own game almost mm -hmm. there. Great indication of Fnatic looking ready. But Infamous got close at the start of the second mm -hmm. and you know, in between some moments on the first, first half, it was a little bit close. So Infamous are looking good, but they don't have that potent element, I feel. I, I feel like Drunk's kind of built them up a little bit. You know, say Infamous, they've been practicing so hard. They're a team that they're, you know, they're worried about, but I didn't see it right there. I mean, not, not to, you know, be too mean towards Infamous, no, no, but, no. you know, when you're an offline right now and you obviously have the two weeks to practice, you got to make that worthwhile. You got to step up right now. And, you know, maybe that was just a bad map, you know, it for them. Been, yeah. It could be going on to land King Dam and they can just 100 ticket lead against Fnatic. Anything can happen, but, you know, this is the first time that they're here. Obviously, yeah. at the playoffs, yeah. at the offline finals, and I wonder the pressure that must be on them for that. Because, you know, obviously playing offline versus online and, you know, being new to this whole thing, it throws off your entire game. Oh, God, yeah. It's so hard to keep that kind of very um, confident gameplay style. Let's keep that in mind. Um, these guys, they, they play a very intelligent game here. They play a very smart game. Uh, we are not live. I think they're just uh, getting themselves ready, actually. Give them a second. I think they're just trying to warm up to this, ne this next map, kind of talk things through. So we're just going to see what they're up to right now and we come back to us and chill out for a bit. You can see they're talking things through, um, yeah. trying to get the tactics right, trying to make sure whatever happened on the first map doesn't happen here. But I think we pointed out, or you pointed out a very good point about the map here. It's not a map that suits Infamous. It's not their kind of style map at all. So they're going to have to adapt or die, pretty much. <laughs> adapt or die, I like that. Yeah, that's, that's very true within the entire Battlefield scene that we've seen so far within you know, the first season, and obviously now the spring season of 2014, and you have to adapt. And Lion King Dam, I'm trying to think about the last time I saw it, because it's been very quiet within the group stages. Mm -hmm. I don't think we actually personally saw it once. Yeah. And I wonder how the map's adapted, or at least the meta's adapted on this map. Because we saw on Dawnbreaker right there, they're like, all right, you know what, forget outside play. We don't even need anyone catwalk. We don't even need to challenge that which work, work on the inside. And I wonder if there's mm. going to be anything different this time because, you know, we've always seen that one thing of from A to C kind of that cap. You know, if you have A and B held, it's really hard to take it back if you're trying to go yeah. for B from C. But you swing someone really far around on the outside and you can catch them off guard and turn things around. Mm. There's, there's a lot of options. As you can see there, it's quite a large map. It's played out throughout the, the entirety. Long rotates, smart play has to happen. Fnatic, they looked pretty good at bit of pretty much doing that. Infamous, they need to focus up here. We are ready to get underway nice and quickly, I do believe. It'll be Fnatic on the Chinese side, 
and it'll be infamous on the Russian side. And infamous need to have worked this one out. They have to have their tactics on point. So I think we are live into this one. So Jason, take us into this. All right, now I really want to see what infamous is going to do because they have to challenge B. And as you can see on your screen, they're sending four men there immediately. But actually, let's take a look at that one man who's actually flanking through the courtyard. That's too easy over towards the bottom left. He's actually kind of spotting him out, maybe just trying to distract him a little bit. He has pulled one man back, and that has given Fnatic maybe a man advantage or at least an equal footing fight here. And let's see he's going to pick up these skills. Drunk's looking for the first one to chase him down here. And it looks like he might be able to pick this up because the guy's not even checking him out. So that will give them the man advantage. But can they cap B because they have not gained control? But it doesn't seem like they're in a hurry just yet. Yeah, Infamous have done the job they wanted. Fnatic are playing for a slightly longer game. They've still got Drunks outside being a pest, but look at too easy. He's doing what he does best. On his own, just oh, kind wow. of roaming around. He's behind A, but he's been spotted. That is huge. Him being found out, his game is now over. Fnatic, Neron got squad wiped there. They only have C. A and B have barely been challenged yet. Too easy has to get these respawns in towards him if they want to challenge. He's found safety. He's got Drunks in, and it's time to go towards B. And the poll that he was able to do, if you notice, I mean, he didn't even try to challenge A. He went under it and went around to B, but he pulled three men back towards that flag. And that allowed them to kind of scope back and forth and allowed the uh, the two-man swing around by Fnatic to pick up A in the end, or at least for that limited amount of time. But right now, they're getting control of B, and this is where Fnatic gets really deadly. It is really hard to break back into B here. You have to hit one of the outside flags. And right now, Infamous, they're not really even sending one man there just yet. They're trying to go for this flat-out fight. Look at this play. Rella not going for the immediate shot, making sure he gets the spot and then going for it. They want to secure this and execute properly here. But now he's in trouble. He's got players coming in left, right and center. He's challenging it down. He's trying to avoid these shots as best he can. But there's literally players surrounding him right now. And Infamous are keeping Fnatic within their close range kind of play style. But Infamous need to get back in control here because they don't quite have that kind of setup in the ideal spots. And Fnatic, they're breaking through and finding their footing finally. And look at the overview right now. Look where Infamous are getting these respawns. They're perfectly set up for them. This is exactly what they needed to break this kind of shell, this defense that uh, Fnatic was able to set up at that C or that B flag. And let's say they're able to cap over it. If they can, they can pull Fnatic away or Fnatic can just straight push into A. And it looks like that's exactly what they're doing here. They're trying to break through that, that flag site. And it looks like they will. Yeah, it's a 3-2 split. The respawns coming in for Infamous. They went down towards the flag. You can see just above them, out by C. Couple of nades, couple of bits of spam. It's only really more doing the job here. He goes down to Rella. Rella's opened this up, going to claim it by himself. And you can see the swarm there. They bought time at A. They didn't get the flag, but now they can work their way through. They can start building towards that B camp, but it's a trip cap against them. And, well, they didn't even what? cap over C properly. That's, Everyone left. That is nerves. That is an unexperienced team at an offline event feeling the pinch of this because Fnatic they've got the lead now they're in a good position but even that one flag that Infamous had is being challenged Fnatic won it all and they are not going to back away until they have it I think they kind of they, they, they got that droplet of blood in the water and they're being sharks and really chasing us down they realize they didn't even cap over C when they had it with three four people they seem really nervous let's just take the fight to them because we're going to feel very confident and so far Thirty ticket lead in their favor they're doing just that and I want to see if they can keep this up here or keep it going because they have lost it on A but we have Valu, again, being the man to work towards C. He did this on Dawnbreaker so many times, and he's got to respawn in. They're going to start pushing for this one, and that will be Rella trying to defend against us, sitting by those uh, cat machines here. And, and we'll charge right into them. They will pick up the kill, but they will get a trade because that nade coming in, and that will be a defense. That will be the flag held onto by Apricot here, and they will hold it. So they will get that 2-1 and they will start to claw away this ticket lead. Yeah, really nicely played then by Infamous, not getting too uh, worried, but perfect pickup by Drunks, but still, Fnatic now are pincered in between A and C. C looks pretty damn good, but Valu straight away back up in here. What is he gonna do? Is he gonna go for this? Is he gonna wait for maybe Drunks to draw their attention and then go for the execute? I think they are. C is looking like the next target here. Tony is in trouble, but Tony takes him down and C is defended. Fnatic, they're not finding an easy way through here. Infamous have the corridors, they have the crossfire, and now they are going to make this hurt to Fnatic. Fnatic need to depend on the 1v1s, which is very hard against a team like Infamous. Especially since they seem to have woken up from the first map. They're a lot closer in kills, 19 to 26, still obviously in Fnatic's favor right here. But the tickets, you know, not that big of, not that big of a difference. 10, 11 right now. And let's see as they are going to start to maybe push in Valo again, working towards the B5. They will get the 2 to 1 hold. And they still have that one man constantly working around towards that C5 here to kind of uh, stall them or just kind of force them to send a couple of men back. And this time it's going to be too easy. Not Valu. And get out that first man. Grimjong going to be taken down here. And he will get the C cap. He's going to pull the guy back from the B, you know, corridor. And he doesn't even know where to go. Abricot is going to be in a tough spot. We'll be taken out from B, uh, the B side. And that will be a tri cap now. And look at these respawns. Only heist in a semi decent place, but it's certainly not safe. 
This triple cap is going to just rip those points away from Infamous. There's so oh, little. Look at that cover. fire! It just got blown to pieces, literally. Infamous, you know, they're, 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 they're trying everything they can, but Fnatic look very strong right now. They, they kind of got shaken up there with that 2 to 1 hold, but they've just come out fighting even harder. And Infamous are barely making it off spawn. It, it's just this barrage of bullets coming towards them. You can see the dead bodies on the floor. Just two players alive, Tony and Abricot. And if I was Fnatic, I'd know those two are splitting somewhere else. But they're going to get the squad respawns. They're going to try and work their way back in here. But with 50 tickets left, they're going to have to pull off a bit of a miracle in this one. Man, they need something right now. And, you know, they, they were really at sea, yes. They were able to get the one the one flag back. But they had to send four men there just to make sure to secure it. And they're right now not even really winning on these 1v1s too easily. As Apricot well, will pick up at least drunks there. But we'll be taking on Cut. right after. And you can look at the deaths right on your screen on the overview map. There was three just right in a line. And that is just Fnatic locking that down. Valu, Welcome you're pointing Valu them out. Taja, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I believe in Estonian, Valu Taja basically means the conqueror. Uh, I think he's living up to the title right now. Um, what a ridiculous line, 12 to What five. does reload mean in Estonian? Uh, it means reloading a gun. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, C is currently uh, in the hands of Infamous, but the other spawns you get when you have this sort of setup pretty much gives a, a lovely position to shoot fish in a barrel. And with only 29 tickets left with Infamous, you can see that they are literally struggling to get away from here. There's two dead bodies because they couldn't make it beyond that. And right now, Tony is struggling to even stay alive. Rella goes down, and this is just looking like an absolute massacre against Infamous. I, I wish I could give them some advice, say something here, but they just cannot break even. I think the only player positive is the man you're watching right now, Tony. He's the only one getting kills, but with 17 tickets left and 94 to Fnatic, this is disastrous for Infamous. They're the team that people feared, but they've been made to look like, well, amateurs. I, I hate, to, I hate to, to say it, but I agree with you. I really do in this one. And you know, Fnatic, I mean, we could talk about, you know, Infamous, they could be playing, you know, they're playing decent, they're playing well, but Fnatic just look on a whole different level. And they are showing no signs of letting this one slip away. But Infamous, you know, there's, there's contesting B, they have three or four men there, but they're being taken down. Grimjow, one of the last men standing, will be dropped here. And now, you know, what are Infamous going to do? I, I'm trying to think, what's the game plan for this? And if anything right now, it's just to get as many kills as possible and not die. And you have to eat away at that 92 ticket lead. And already Mort's looking like we want this game over and done with. We just want to get that third flag and give you guys no options. And that's exactly what's happened. Drunks has absolutely decimated them. And with a 91 ticket lead. My god, that is huge for Fnatic. Wow. It is. And this is what we said. I mean, Lan Kang Dam, you're going on to their territory. Yeah. Operation Locker used to be the map that we always saw Fnatic play and was their map. They were the kings of it. But right now, I mean, they're showing that, you know, Lank came down, they've been working on that. We haven't seen it in a long time, no. but they still know how to play it. They've been practicing, obviously, here, and they shut Infamous down hard. I mean, we can just even talk about the kills on their side. Five to nine Take for Grimshaw, eight to seven for Tony, the only one finishing positive, eight to 12 for Abricot, six and 12 for Hist, and six and 11 for Rella. It's just, they, they need more kills. They, they need to do something here. They have to catch Fnatic off guard because the strategy that they're running right now, it's not working. No, it's not. Um, and allowing the two players who've been... <laughs> you can see a nice little grin there. Look at that. That's a smug face. But yeah, 12 to 4 for too easy. Very well performed <laughs> He knew the well. camera was there. Yeah, indeed. It's like, uh, oh, I'm on camera. I'm sorry. Just, you know, Didn't mean to smile. Yeah, no, I look more serious, handsome. Serious. Serious times. But they do need to stay focused. You know, Infamous did get some two, good 2 to 1 holds. They did lock they, they had Fnatic a good one, down yeah. towards just B. You know, and, and they did have moments where it was like, ah, this is good. But it's not... Oh, that's infamous. The you know the really kind of powerful, aggressive team that we mm. see. This is oh, they're a good team at Battlefield. It's not their style. You know, so that's interesting. That I'm thinking about back to groups is that we saw Fnatic play against Infused, and and Too Easy got really kind of annoyed by them because Infused yeah. were just kind of this random team, just throw people in any direction and catch you off guard. Yeah, I think they kind of learned from that game and were able to uh, get, at least read into things a little bit easier and gather information a little bit better and prevent mm. that from happening because they are, they're looking unstoppable. I mean, this is obviously just the first game of the yes. day and they're looking like a team that can easily make it to the finals. Yeah, this is a very good early sign. I, I think we need to see every other team to kind of get a good overall picture. But, you know, this was a big game to start off with and having an 86 ticket lead in the first map and a 91 in the second. My, my heart bleeds a little for Infamous because I would not like to be in their shoes right now. It's it's a horrible place to be at because any two to one extended hold means Fnatic have it in the bag and you just don't want to give these guys that opportunity by any means. You, you've got to take every single moment, but we are almost ready to get underway 
into this one, I do believe. Uh, we can jump in in just a second, but um, I don't believe it's live, actually. Tell a lie. They are just talking things through. Well, I mean, we can uh, look at this. There's an going there, yeah. We can look at this. I mean, say Infamous does lose, it doesn't really get easier for them with PKD and Epsilon coming up after that. You know, the loser oh, of that yeah. one be playing up against. It's not like there's an easy path for any team here, and right now they need to do something, and I believe we are not ready just yet. We're not live just yet. We're just going to have the teams to make sure they get the settings. I'm just, to get yeah, right, take yeah. a little bit of a break, you know, talk things over because they realize what's on the line here. It's obviously a double elimination kind of group stage, but you don't want to go out on the first okay. map. You know what? I, I, I'm wondering if we can, when these guys start talking over the tactics and we go to the start, I want to hear what Fnatic are like. You know, they're a team to me that are very calm, collected, um, and and pretty much have, you know, this this very stoic approach to it. But the picture I saw not too long ago of too easy, you know, head in hands, absolutely distraught. That that's a lot of emotion to have there. And he is a very vocal guy. So I want to see how, you know, overall they're feeling towards this because, you know, this little bit of a break resets things a little bit. I, I like that you point that out actually. Because then you can go, okay guys, you know, if you're infamous, let's let's ignore it. Wipe the slate clean, focus back up, and let's get ready to do this. You know, we, we mm -hmm. got this far, we've you know, challenged and done so much better before. Let's do it again. But on Fnatic's side, it works the opposite way, or it can potentially work the opposite way, where you have this time now, you're not feeling as pumped up, not as you don't have that momentum, I guess, carrying over as, yeah. as quickly, and you get that little kind of a calm down, that little bit of a cool down, and that obviously can change things up. But Fnatic, they're an experienced team, probably one of the most, if not the most experienced team here at the playoffs. Especially on LAN. Yeah, well, it's, yeah, exactly. And I don't think that's going to affect them too much, but I think they realize, you know what, we're, we're one half away now from advancing on into the winner's bracket side of this group A, and that would be, I guess, one step closer to getting to the playoffs and to redeem themselves from the last season. Yeah, and that that's going to be in the forefront of their minds, but let's never underestimate Infamous. These guys can do wonders. They can do something so much more than what we've seen. I desperately want it to happen. Fnatic, though, were just leading the pace the whole way through. But let's see if they can kind of replicate that again. So guys, I think we are almost ready to get underway. 10 seconds on the countdown. The Chinese side this time will be Infamous. Fnatic will be the Russians. And if Infamous, the Chinese side, on the right side of the overlay, drop below 91 tickets, first map goes to Fnatic. So, well, second map and the overall game. So let's tune in with those uh, the, the, the kind of voice comms on Fnatic. I want to see what's going on with them. It's uh, hard, you know, on office. Uh, I'm outside. I think they're all... Uh, who's opposite me? They're going to push back. I'll see, I mean, I'll see, I think. No yeah. one is here. Yeah. Prem, prem, prem. One under, one under. Paper, paper. Shooting me. Push. Guys, I need someone to shoot a uh, paper. Inside, inside. Exit. One down, exit. One exit. Dead, dead, dead. Jumping. One is up. Ah, uh, A, 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 A. Don't spawn. Where on B? On the A. No clue. Stay alive, Martin. Ram? One more ram. Don't spawn soon. What the fuck? Two ram. Two down, A. Are we going? Nice, Can nice, you cap nice. A? We got A, we got A. I liked hearing Mort there because you heard him say like two down a like he like it wasn't a big deal for him like it was just another day at, at work for him and either way you can hear them really really solid communication there's a little bit of you know some missteps in there trying to you know obviously drunk's a little bit upset that he got killed from I believe they called it paper uh, right there but still they're playing very strong they have the two to one I remember 91 is that threshold and already infamous are very close to it infamous have C but for how long? Heist going for a little bit of a sneaky push through towards B. That's a good spot for him to be in. Actually drawing on B and then waiting for the push from A. Smart play, but he needs backup here to take this one down. He spots out a player, but it doesn't matter. Unfixed. He's just being a bit of a monster right now. And can he get any more? He's going to see one. He gets the kill. Beautiful play. Goes wow. to the pistol. Oh, my word. Unfixed with a beautiful hat trick of kills just to completely wipe out Infamous. A squad wipe is not going to help. And a triple cap to boot. This game could be over before it's even started. That was 1v3, and he pulled off. I thought that was Valu for a second, but it wasn't because we see Valu pull that off so many times. But that just shows, you know, the weapons that Fnatic has the, and that can really step up for him. And again, they spawn on the outside, immediately get dropped to now. I don't know if see the other half here, but if they lose this push, it's over. Like, there's just no way for them to come back in this map. And they're already being shot at. They're already being spotted out here. And they're tr starting to transition some people into that C flag, or at least get in a better position to hold on to the push from C towards B. And Valu will... He's not letting that happen. He's already been able to pick up Cardi a few kills here. Last minute sending Grimjaw. Going to be knocked down here. And I think that's going to be it. I think Fnatic finally going to redeem themselves for a little bit here, taking down Infamous in the first game of the day and advancing on along the winner's bracket. Infamous just could do nothing but die here. They've got the terrible spawn by A. But this triple cap, Fnatic, they've done it. They've gone and picked up the first one in a great style. Focus, poise, everything they needed. Brilliantly done by these guys. 
And no matter what Infamous could throw at them, Fnatic did not flinch a muscle. Yeah, they did. And uh, they're not even giving us some, like, you know, expressions of happiness. I think they're kind of just staying focused because I don't think the admins have called it over just yet for them. Yeah, they're, they're playing it out. They're just yeah. going to play them up. It's a good warm-up. But to do this for Fnatic is the perfect start. And you can see relief. It's not just, you know, happiness. It's relief. You know, everyone said, yeah, but yeah, but now they can kind of prove people wrong. It's like, yes, but everyone expects them to do these incredible things. And now everyone's looking at them to perform again. And they have in the first game. That's their moment to kind of sit back and go, all right, guys, we're in the right position here, and they're going to go forward. Yeah, and the thing is, they have a lot of expectation or, uh, from just from the, from the audience of expecting them to do well. And yeah. Obviously, they let their you know, fans down last time. They let the entire uh, you know Battlefield player base out there because they weren't able to really pull through at the end. I mean, obviously, they lost to the team that went on to get second and, and took Mutual Makers to five games yeah. uh, total, and they could have potentially even won out on that one. Mm. But still, they want to win first. Like, second, third, fourth isn't, isn't something they ever won again. Oh God, no! They they are out for blood, and I, I think you know it was it was the drop of blood in the water, and they were the yeah. sharks. Perfect analogy for how they played. There was no moment when they stopped. You heard those comms. It was literally boom, boom, boom. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm at a. In in Lucifer's was stay safe, stay alive. You know when they were telling. I think it was uh, Mort who was the one guy out there on A, and they mm -hmm. pushed up yeah. towards him, and he got in a nice position, med pack down, got ready, two players challenge, done, done and dusted. And they went out for it. You know, they played a very hard game of Battlefield. And as I said, no moment of rest. None yeah. at all. And I mean, Infamous. I mean, I, I obviously Fnatic did a fantastic job, but we have to talk about them because they were the, the Katy Perry coming into this. <laughs> There's no way I'm going to say the okay. words that, that Red Eye really wants to get me to say, but... What words are those? I, I don't know. Um, <laughs> but they just didn't look like the team that we've been hearing about just yet. And I hope they do fix things up. But I mean, quickly, what's your thoughts on them at the end? I mean, do you think they're going to be able to take this next game when they get to the loser's bracket? I think they're going to be struggling, but I want to hear from Fnatic myself. That's that's a big thing. I want to see how they're feeling, and you know that that's a big kind of moment for me there. Yeah, well, let's head over to Red Eye. Have this uh, post-match interview. I believe it's with Drunks, and obviously we want to hear what he has to say. Thank you, guys. Yes, congratulations, first of all, Drunks. Uh, I don't think we can call that anything other than a demolition. Um, how important was it for you guys to come in today? kind of ignore what happened in season one finals and really put a marker down and say just where you guys are right now. Well, we had to uh, get in and uh, be serious instantly. So the first game we had today was against uh, Infamous and we won with a pretty uh, good uh, score. But um, we took it very seriously. This is uh, why we won pretty easily because next match should be uh, way harder. So we have to get in and be uh, at our best level instantly. I think we can do even better, and uh, we'll have to do it anyway. So how, how is the, talk to me about how the team is feeling in general. I mean, have you talked about what happened as a team? I mean, obviously a different team for you, but has the team talked about what happened last season and learnt from it and moved on, or is it just completely disregarding everything from last season? This one's a brand new one. Yes, we are not thinking anymore about the last season, and uh, I think last season we had uh, too much confidence. And uh, this is not good because you can't underestimate every team. Now we are uh, with a new uh, mindset and uh, we're here to win. We're not going to fail this time. It's going to be good. Okay. Um, looking a little bit further forward in the tournament, potentially you come up against Epsilon in the next game, if they win their game, of course. We know it's a bit of a rivalry. We know that you guys have had a bit of a grudge match thing going on for a while. It's great for the game because it, you know, it's interesting for us as spectators watching it. How is it for you, though? How intense is that rivalry? Well, we pretty much meet them in a lot of finals. So this is one of the matches we expect the most to play. And uh, we're going to give our best for this game. We want to beat them. They want to beat us. So it's going to be a great game for sure. Well, best of luck in the rest of your games and uh, congratulations on the first match of the day. Drunks there from Fnatic who have absolutely whitewashed in their first game. Infamous go down. They do get another chance to come back from the lower bracket though. But Fnatic now wait to play the winners of the second match in Group A. It's coming up very shortly. Don't go too far away and make sure you check out ESL-1.com for all the votes that are going on. Your chance to, of course, uh, win some competition goodies courtesy of our friends at EA and dice. Quick break now, but when we come back, game two, let's find out whether Epsilon can carry on their excellent form from the cup season. <laughs> 